Hello everybody, Raiden here, and welcome to my first entry in the Pillars of Eternity series. Now, I want to tell you guys, I'm not going to play through this whole game. That's ridiculous, this game is so long and it has so much content in it. But I want to play it for you guys, and I want to show you what I think is cool about it. Maybe I'll do the first act, maybe the second one. But there's no way I think I'm going to finish this unless it gets some kind of huge reception, which I doubt it will. But I want to show you guys how cool the game is, and if you think it's really cool, support it by going out and buying it yourself. Show, if you don't know who this is made by, it's made by Obsidian. And if you purchase it, you show them how much we want it even more. And this game to me is the standard for Kickstarters, I should say. Like, it should be held as a golden standard for Kickstarters as what things can do when they have funding. Now, if you don't know what a Pil uh, Pillars of Eternity is, it's an old, uh, what is it called, a CRPG? Like, Baldur Gate, Neverwinter Nights, or Torment? I happened to play a lot of those when I was young, so this brought back, it's the nostalgia factor which helps. But it, I also rate the game fairly on things that I think it should have. It's a modern take. So without further ado, let's start a new game. Now, in Pillars of Eternity, we're going to choose difficulty, I'm just going to go normal. You have Trial of Iron, which is you only can keep one save file. If the player is killed, it is deleted. And there's Expert Mode, which de uh, deletes a bunch of like the helper icons, but I'd prefer to have those. So, ahead of time, I'm going to warn you guys that this game has a lot of dialogue. And don't worry, I'll narrate what isn't voice acted. The good part about this game is that it voice acts... It voice acts more than the old CRPGs does, but I feel like there's not enough there. Like, it, it's kind of weird that in conversations you'll be talking and they'll voice act out maybe three of their lines, and then for the next five lines you're just reading it, and it, there's no reason specifically why they only voice acted those lines. I have played a little bit of this game. I haven't played it too much. So... I Five have dragons to... grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. So, what you just heard is our classic dungeon master type narration. I think that's pretty cool that they have that in there. But in a lot of scenes, they don't. One thing that I love about this game in particular is... Okay, so the character creation is great. It's insane to me. I already knew what I was going to be when I started. I knew what I wanted to do when I started. So I'm going to be a male. You have male and female, but then we go on to the races. Oops. I didn't... Did I skip the race? I did. Okay, so for races, we have humans. I'm only going to go over the races if I pick them. I'm not going to read the entire entry for each one. You have uh, uh, Almana, which are kind of like a cat person. You have your dwarves, your elves, just like everything else. You have Orlan, which are kind of like your halflings. And my personal favorite, although I'm not going it, is the godlike race. And I'll get to that. I'll get to how cool these guys are when I go and create a character. Because my party is going to be made out of two pre-composed characters, or three pre-composed characters, and then three characters that I can find just here and there along the way. So, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so, I wanted to go Amana, and the coolest thing is that there's sub-races, so I wanted to be this blue avatar looking guy. I like it. So, in my own solo campaign, I went Monk. Because I was like, oh, monks are super cool, that's what I want to be. And I think a lot of Let's Players tend to skip around the monk because they're like, oh, it's the monk and it's hard and it probably just sucks at late game. 
And the only thing with the monk is that you have to get wounds. So you have to get hit as a monk to use a lot of your skills. So I don't think I want to go. I Yeah, I'll go the monk this time around. I'm going to play this originally just like I did before. And as the monk, you have two starting skills, which are Swift Strikes and Torment's Reach. Both requires a wound to use. I personally prefer the Swift Strikes. That's just me. Okay, here we have our Tribute Selection screen. You have your Might, which is your damage and healing. You have Constitution, which is Endurance and Health. You have uh, Dexterity, which is your action speed. Perception, which gives you a chance for interrupt, deflection, and reflexes. You have Intellect, which is your area of effect spells, your, dura your duration, and your total will. And then lastly, your Resolve, which also has a deflection score, concentration, and will. So, if you can see here, it tells you the most important things for the class that you want to go. And then, like, a side thing, like, I don't need to focus so much in Might. So, I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to put quite a few points into this. I'm going to turn my Might up a little bit. Now, these three, uh, it, it really depends on what you think is most important for you. I personally like the Resolve. I want to put some in that because the Deflection scores are super nice to have. And if you don't know what deflection is, I'm going to go back and look at it. Deflection is defense to ra used to direct melee and range attack against the characters that are not in your area of effect. It is a super useful attribute to have. Now, you can choose your culture, which adds plus one anything onto it. I prefer to get the extra dexterity. I mean, resolve is nice too. I might try the resolve this time around. Uh, we're from the Ex Exmatil Plains, located northeast of Ir Glenfoth. The only reason I'm not reading this so much is because you can read it yourself, first of all. And secondly, I want to get to the story, and if I read... I love reading lore, remember that. But if I read every single thing, character creation is going to take me two hours. So, I'm going to do that. Now you can choose your background, and this adds your side skills. And if you're familiar with Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder, you might know some of these. For example, if I'm an aristocrat, I have extra lore. Which, what lore is, is, say, you come across, like, some ancient ruins. It's like, oh, I don't know what these ruins mean. And then you're like, wow, I know what they mean. It's like, wow, you're so smart. Yeah, it's not like me in real life. Then there's stealth and survival. Survival is like food. Stealth is kind of obvious. You have athletics. Athletics are super important for a monk. So I usually go athletics and lore. Just because I like the idea of lore. I love the skill of it. And just being like, hey, I know what this is. And I love athletics because it allows me to get out of situations quickly. So my favorite portrait is this one. Because it looks a lot like this character I already have. But I want to choose his colors. I want to make him green just kind of like in the picture. And his secondary color is red, like this darkish red. I want his skin to be a lot lighter. And the hair can be the same, but I want a different style of it. See if I can find the style I had. It was this one. So there we go. I have that now. And now I push next. And we can choose our voices. I'm going to go through them. Well, There's your sinister. Now I am the leader of the group. Follow me. Ha! Ah! Hmm? Yeah. Oh, leading the I, way. Easy now. Follow me. I personally like the stoic voice, so I'm gonna go Follow with that. Me. The sinister one's pretty cool, but I have a few friends, and I asked them, "Hey, what would you like to name your character?" And through the names, I kind of decided what kind of character they should be and how I'm gonna plan out my party. So those two extra characters, you know, are made by my friends and made to set how they act. So, I already cre I know what my character's name is going to be. His name is going to be Law. I just think that's a really cool name. Especially for a monk. So, let us delve into this world. The Caravan Master finishes addressing the group. His bushy red... Must sagging 
Jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Valeria's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path clear. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes Alas, as he looks you over. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. Sounds good. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. Alright, so now we have our basic Dungeons, uh, Baldur's Gate, or even Dragon Age style questions and answers so i'm only gonna ask the absolutely necessary i know where to find the berry so i'm not gonna ask it to him because i've gone through this beginning part before uh let's ask about these ruins though nothing you won't see on half the hills of air glonfoth money to be made selling their knickknacks in defiance bay if you don't mind getting stuck with glonfoth and arrows now and again they didn't build them but i'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear all right. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn. So I hear. Um, I already know it's dangerous. These rocks play in a very important part here. Let me... They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in defiance. Okay, I'm gonna go get those berries then. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy armor-clad woman who has spent the journey and night sleeping on uneven ground without a blanket Kalisha. or pillow. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. <laughs> I love this character. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Aiden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the okay. Man. Let's get um, going before you keel over. He said Beowick. And I you're supposed to figure this out later, but I kinda know it now. Beowick is a it's a type of wind that comes by, and it's said to almost just carry or, like, lifts someone's souls. But if your soul is heavy enough, if it's, like, complete, or such as I've heard, then it will not affect you. Okay, so here we have our basic interface. It's very much like... Okay, yes, I understand this. It's very much like... You even have the same exact pointer as you did in Baldur's Gate. Okay, so we have our I've got commands down here. We have attack, cancel, select all. We have stealth, which we can use to go invisible. Well, not really invisible, but it's a hiding thing. It's good for rogues. We have our inventory, which I don't think we have anything in. And we have our stats, and it tells you everything. It tells me, law. my name's Law. I'm a level one monk. This is my race. This is my background. How many enemies I've killed, my most time in the party, enemies defeated, most hits. And it talks about my physique. You can get all of your information from here. So without further ado, 
Let's go with Callista and let's get these with berries. Of eternity, we strive with every level. Hold on, I realized I just forgot to turn the developer's commentary off. It's pretty cool that they have it in there, though. So, we're gonna go and get these berries. I know where they are, because I've done this before. And I don't just want to walk Let's around in almost a pointless manner. Okay, so here we come into the combat for the first time. We have a young wolf. Now, from what I understand... She is our tank right now. At least I think she is. She's holding a torch, and I think she's a fighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send her forward to attack the wolf because she needs to tank the damage. Monks are fairly sustainable, but they're still not as tanky. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have him back off. Because it's a level 1 enemy, I don't essentially have to put that much effort into it. I don't... I could literally just mash their faces against them and he'll die at the moment, but that won't work later on. So as you can see, we have our skills here. and you, There's weapon sets too, I'll go over that later. Uh, this skill is called Knockdown. You get two per encounter, and what it means two per encounter, that's every time you run into a group of enemies, you can use it twice. Uh, most skills for magic users are daily, and even some skills for non-magic users are daily. So, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Knockdown skill on the wolf, and I'm gonna have Law come back and attack the wolf too. All attacks that do damage have overcome the target's damage reduction. An enemy's damage uh, DR reduces the incoming damage by the listed amount, down to the minimum percentage. Alright, so let's go ahead and take out this wolf now. As you can see, the character models are in full 3D and finely detailed. I really, really like it. It's a really nice looking game for being a CRPG. Alright, so now we're going to get those berries this is it. that we were told to get. Now she's going to ask us a few questions about what we did. You look like you've seen your share of action. What'd you do before you came out here? I was a war veteran. I was a blade for hire. I used to go on adventures. I was a constable. That isn't your business. I'm, I'm not going to be a jerk. I'm just going to say I used to go on adventures, expeditions. What happened? How come you got here? Got into a bar fight with someone with the spare time and resources to punish me for the rest of my life. Uh, had a job go bad on me. Some deaths that didn't need to happen. I took a job from the wrong person. Only after I finished it would I realize... Okay, it caused everyone to hate me. And I just had my fill of it. Time to lead a quieter life. Uh, I feel like if I'm a monk, that's kind of the way I'd want to live. Well, we all got things we'd like to leave behind. Gods know I do. I'll tell you that. Here's hoping that they never track us down. Kalitska breathes in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Radric's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You're here to settle. Like the rest of the lot, it's a hard offer to pass up. No, I'm just passing through, and I haven't given it much thought. Um, so you must have some other plan in mind for coming this way. I hope to meet someone and fall in love. I really like that option. So... I don't want to scare you, but be but the way some of these rural types look, you might want to reconsider that. Lots of sideways teeth and hair sprouting from unexpected places. Um, I'm gonna ask her a few questions, but I want to figure out her whole biography, and you'll 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 see why. Kaliska sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here some time back. She sent me a letter. She seemed worried. But that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out, and that's gotten me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages, been doing guide work in Ixamtil. But I do anything for her. She's, well, she's a much better woman than me, so I'm here and we'll see. Odema, I've worked with before. He doesn't usually drive her out this way, but he's doing it for me. Let's just go back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfill's getting water anytime soon. He does what he feels like, when he feels like it. We should check up on him first, slap him around a little. The stream's just down the way. Mm. Alright, so another cool thing is, I know we're not going to run into any enemies. So this, unlike the old, like, <laughs> unlike old CRPGs, has a double speed button. Which makes travel so much more convenient. 
And also, you'll get XP for killing monsters. I know that sounds a little weird, but you get XP for exploring and completing quests. Not looking forward to trying to lift that thing tomorrow. Okay, this is where I wanted to go. I wanted to go over here. But I really kind of actually like this system. So that way I'm not... I feel like I'm an explorer more than I'm going outside to grind down monsters. So this is where we have to go, but I thought it's a little side note. The corpse is cold to the touch and a ripe smell waves from its putrid waves. Uh, a dark crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple linen clothing. And we have a corpse here and we can pick some stuff off of it. And I believe that's a plant that we can know. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and search for the guy who is getting water. What a surprise. Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Come on. Yeah. So let's get his water skins. You crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kaliska waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. Out of the trees emerges Sparfell, one of the guides. Barely discernible in the dim moonlight, he no longer carries his bow, and there's a strangeness to his gait. His stride wobbly as he moves towards you with a labored breath. Sparfell, are you alright? Sparfell's toe catches on a rock, and he collapses forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Okay, so now we're taking on two enemies. So, late in the game, you're going to want to try and have as many enemies focus the tank as possible. But since it is a 2v2, I'm going to have my monk actually charge the ranged unit. Because, remember, here are the priorities that's always been in Baldur's Gate games, and I'm going to tell it to you now. In order, you want to get mages over archers... Over healers, over tanks. Rogues, it depends on how strong the rogue is. So, I'm going to have her knock this guy down immediately upon fighting. And yeah. he's going to charge the hunter. Sometimes a weapon or spell simply isn't do suited to doing... Suited to penetrating an army's... Army's... Oh my goodness, am I talking? An enemy's damage reduction. When the attack hits... The DR will wipe out all but a small percentage of the incoming damage. You'll hear your characters complain about that when it happens. Take heed, note the damage type that's being blocked, and switch to a different weapon or spell. So, that could be just because of the type of spell she tried to use. And it just didn't work. So, we're just going to have her melee attack that guy to death. In the meantime, let's see if he attacks me so I can get a wound. This counter right here, only monks have, and it's a wound counter. You need it to use your skills. Other classes don't need that. But in order to use monk skills, you have to get hit first. So that guy had 17 gold on him. That's pretty good. And... Had a jewel and some armor. So let's get back to the camp. Because nothing good can be happening over there. If we're under attack, we really need to check on the camp. Because... Oh, here we go. Alright, I'm going to send her forward to attack this hunter. And she's going to draw all the aggro from everyone while I worry about this guy. I'm going to have her try to use spell again. It may not work. I don't know. Oh, she actually got knocked down. Okay, so I got that first guy. Awesome. Awesome. And if you attack a downed enemy, your accuracy increases and your chance to do a critical hit increases. And there are even some skills in the game that you can only use on downed enemies. So we got a shield and some armor. And the thing about a monk, though, is you don't really have to wear the armor. I'm not saying you don't have to wear armor, but it's just you want to wear light armor and keep light on weaponry. Okay, a Glanfallen leader. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts. Splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Kaliska puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away some poisonous viper. Vapor. Viper. 
Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. Okay, so here are the choices we have. We have, why have you done this? If we use our lore, we can say the ruin has not been sullied by our, by our hands, men's of ear Glanfoff. We have not trespassed, we, we, we merely wish to pass through. I don't know what they did, but I don't have anything to do with it. Murderers, you'll pay f for each life. You will try to kill us either way, why make it easy? I am unarmed. The I am unarmed one is funny because I'm a monk. It's hilarious. Okay, let's use our lore. Your words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. Okay, we can... Uh, we're missing a bunch of options that we normally would have because we don't have those skills. But we do have athletics. We can rush him before he can react. So let's see if that works. If we get a successful roll... Your surprising speed catches the man off guard. He hurls Hyoden out of the way in hopes of buying himself time to defend your charge. So basically what I just did is I ensured that Hyoden could fight with us and that he did not die. So that's pretty cool. He's a rogue, so I'm going to have him escape. And I'm going to have her charge. I'm going to have myself kind of sit back here. Okay, well, he's getting creamed. I need him to leave though because he cannot take the damage. Like she can. So this isn't the most efficient way to do this, but we're gonna get we're gonna get it done this way anyway. So we got them all. The Glanfoth and leader, your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companions now silent among the other death, or the other dead. His breath comes wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs in the air. See, there's wind on screen. That's pretty cool. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good, good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. My body is ready. I mean, I am ready. <laughs> I wasn't even trying to make a joke. I seriously said that like... <laughs> Oh my goodness, alright, well. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it feels as though it's rendering you rending you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bowel, Odema's body stirs, and with great effort he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely open. He looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! You heard him. I don't need to read that. And this wind right here. If you're wondering what that is, that's the wind I told you about earlier. That I can't properly pronounce. Straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of feathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the preci precipice? Yeah. With a last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Hyoden trails behind, slowed by injury and is delayed by hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for Hyoden and topples him quickly to the rocky ground. Restrained, Hyoden lashes out against his fatigue assailant, but struggles to break his hold. I think that's a... struggles to break his hold. I think that's supposed to be hold. Without a weapon in your hands, you can do little to help him from where you stand. Okay, so we, we have two things. We can allow him to break free on his own and hope he's fine. Or we can use our dexterity skill and make a roll and hope that we can hit him with a rock. If you have a weapon, you can actually throw the weapon at him, but I'm a monk. So let's just go hope for the best. Your aim is true, and the hit jars Hyoden loose. Lurching to his feet, Hyoden clambers up the base of the rocks as he nears the top. However, the wind flares, pulling him sideways, tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it, securing his other hand. You pull with a waning strength, and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold just long enough for Hyoden to set his feet, 
and join you on the trembling ledge. There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind below. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menace, uh, menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old arcway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. So, basically, we got attacked by some guys because we were accused of doing something to their ruins. Was that... And these guys are their job is to protect the ruins. A Beowick. Had to be. So yeah, that wind outside was a Beowick. We t I talked to you about it earlier. And we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Alright. I'm gonna end this episode here, guys. I hope you enjoyed the very first episode. There's going to be many more to come. As I said, I don't think I'm going to finish this. Because this game, it just doesn't get a lot of reception. And I love playing it, but for playing this for about, what, 100 to 200 episodes? Uh, I already have The Witcher going. I think I want to play a relatively short game. So that's why this is kind of be... It's going to be around like a quick look. So it's going to be maybe around like 20 to 40 episodes. I don't know. So I hope you guys have been enjoying it. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, and I hope you join me next time. Riding out. People live close to the earth and the sky. sky, sky.